Hi, it's Mr. Anderson and this is Chemistry Essentials video 71. It's on free energy and the equilibrium constant. Over the last 20 videos, we've been talking about two things, thermodynamics and the importance of delta G, where we can think of delta G as the amount of uh, free energy available in the products and the reactants and a reaction occurring as we kind of move from reactants to products. And then we started talking about equilibrium and the importance of K, which is a measure of the concentration of products to reactants. As K is equal, so are the reactants and products. As it increases, we shift towards the right as it decreases, we shift towards the left. But it's important that you understand that we can interchange these two things, delta G and K, and that they are inherently tied together. And so in any reaction, we can look at it using thermodynamic reasoning and the importance of changes in free energy or changes in delta G, and also looking at it as an equilibrium reaction where we've got K, this equilibrium constant, which tells us are we shifting more towards the right or towards the left, and that there is a algebraic connection between these two where delta G equals the negative RT, so that's gonna be the gas constant because times the absolute temperature times the natural log of K. And so we can interact between the two. And if we figure out our delta G, which, I mean, you could use the appendix in the back of most chemistry books to figure it out, that tells us a lot about what's gonna to happen to K. And so let's k say K is equal to one. We have an equal amount of reactants and products. Well, if we plug that into this reaction, that means our delta G or a change in delta G is gonna be equal to zero. What happens if our K value is greater than one? In other words, it shifted towards the right. We'd now have a delta G that's gonna be a negative value. So we think of this as an exothermic reaction. It's spontaneous, it's moving towards the right. And then if we look at a K value much less than one, then we're gonna get a delta G of a positive value. Value. So that's an endothermic reaction. It's consuming energy. It's non-spontaneous. And so it's really tying together these two big thoughts that we've been talking about for a long time. Now generally in AP Chemistry we've only talked about uh, exothermic or endothermic, but you should also understand there's energy involved in this. And so we could think of this as an exergonic or giving off energy reaction or an endergonic reaction. Now why is that important? Well in biological systems it's important to, to look at the amount of total energy that's either given off or being consumed, not necessarily the heat that's given off or consumed. And so if we look at this interaction right here between delta G and K, and let's look at a few reactions, reversible reactions. So in this one, the breakdown of water into its different ions, we would call a delta G value, if we measure that, of 79.9 kilojoules. Now let me show you what the K value is. It's gonna be a really, really small value. What do we know about a positive delta G? That means it's an uphill reaction, non-spontaneous reaction. What do we know about a really small K value? That means it's gonna be shifted more towards the left or shifted more towards the reactants in this case. If we look at another reaction, in this case we've got a delta G that's a negative value. What's that tell us about its K value? That's going to be a positive value. So this is a spontaneous reaction or a downhill reaction and in this case it's shifted way towards the right. So you should be able to predict if I give you a delta G what's going to be my K value. Is it going to be positive or negative? That'd be the first question and is it going to be a really small or a really large value? So since our delta G is a positive value, we know that our K value is going to be really, really small um, just using this equation up here. And so you could plug in a gas constant and our absolute temperature and that's going to be easily uh, calculated. And so if we were to summarize it again, how are these two tied together? Delta G is negative, then we've got a K equal to a value greater than one that's gonna favor the products or it's gonna move more towards the right. If it's equal to zero, K equals one. And then if delta G is going to be a positive value, our K value is gonna be much less than one or it's gonna favor the reactants. And so why is this important? Well, if we're looking at biology, if we're looking at the chemistry of life, it really tells us how we can couple reactions together. And so if we look at this famous reaction up here, what we've got is glucose combining with oxygen and we're making carbon dioxide and water. And so what is this? This is gonna be cellular respiration. It's taking place in all the cells of your body right now. If we were to look it up in the appendices, we'd find our delta G value is gonna be negative 
2880 kilojoules. So we've got a delta G value that's a negative value. What does that mean? It's going to shift towards the right. So what would our K value be? It's going to be greater than 1. So that's going to favor our products. It's going to move towards the right. This is a spontaneous reaction if we can get it going and we use enzymes inside the cells to do that. Now what are we using that energy to do? Well we've got another reaction here. We've got adenosine diphosphate and if we add a phosphate to it we make ATP. What do you use ATP to do? It's used in all the cells of your body. It's essentially cellular coinage that your cells use to do work. I mean, that's how you think, that's how you move, that's how you kind of do all the chemical reactions inside your body. And so what's going on inside our cells, more appropriately inside the mitochondria of our cells, is that we're coupling this exergonic reaction or this reaction that gives off energy with an endergonic reaction, one that consumes it. And so you could think of these as gears as we're converting that sugar into carbon dioxide and water. We're using the energy that's released in that endergonic reaction and we're tying that to, or exergonic reaction, we're tying it to an endergonic reaction. And so did you learn to relate delta G to K? In other words, what happens as we decrease our delta G, as we shift it more towards the right, what happens to our K and vice versa? I hope so, and not only do I hope that was helpful, this is the last video in this series, and so I hope the whole AP Chemistry series has been helpful. I hope you've been along with me, and thanks for watching.